welcome to my cast. My name is Wilson Castellino, and today joining with me is Matuf M. Khan, a writer and a, a po- poetician, should I say? Do you write poetry as well? I do not write poetry. Majorly an author, that novelist sounds better. Yeah, a novelist, right? Uh, uh, so uh, uh, I have not really interviewed a lot of uh, novels, and I'm not much of a reader as well. So this one's gonna be a hard one. But however, I had have been in a, a surrounding of people who read a lot, and they uh, they they actually um, they are like ad- advocates of you know uh, reading. Uh, you know, read but be- reading is always better than uh, as we were discussing before. So, yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. I I want to ask this question to you. How hard it is being in today's uh, day, uh, in today's time, being a writer, because uh, uh, there certain there's certainly been an evolution in this field as well. And uh, what is new uh, and what is different in today's landscape of uh, writing? What really uh, interests me is that uh, there is so much going around. Okay. Yeah. And being a person who tries to uh, absorb the reality and creating fiction out of it, yeah, I feel it's like a wonderful time to be a. But uh, I mean, that is for me as an individual because I have had this uh, idea that I cannot talk about the rest. I can talk about what I'm doing. Right. And for me, at least, it is something which is. Um, like there's a lot of stuff that is going around, a lot of information out there. Yeah. yeah. Like you said that you're not a, a reader, but you are still finding various. Right. I hope you're still finding various yes. modes of ga- yes. gathering information. Yes. There are new mu- which, mu- means, yeah. There are yes. new means. Of, and yeah. so the, in, once you're gathering all that information, now this is where the creativity comes. Yeah. How you use that. Right. How you process that information and how you turn it out into something creative, right? Yes, and uh, doing this for almost six, for over six and a half years, I s- see myself at a point where uh, I know what I'm doing next. Yeah. I know what I'm doing with this one particular subject and what I want to bring out in front of my readers, majorly. Right. Right. And right. since I've transitioned into uh, sharing short stories through audio clips, I'm keeping yeah. it out for free on Instagram, man. I mean, right. it's for everybody because that's something which I'm not going to be publishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I'm trying, at least with those audio clips, I'm trying to get the, or uh, into a point where they try to grasp some, get something out of it, something right. which could be either uncomfortable or something which could either be, you know, soft-hearted or make someone stay. I mean, just playing around right. with whatever yeah. I want to. Yeah, but it's, just it's always great to, you know, if, you, if you're if you a creator, it's always uh, healthy to keep your stuff, uh, uh, put yourself out uh, for, for the people. Uh, I, I really, uh, 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 I really believe that, uh, uh, that an, if an artist is constantly uh, uh, creating and uh, putting his work out, which is important, if he's creating and keeping it in tune to it himself, then he's just building this uh, huge baggage of you know stuff he's not released and is scared to release or something like that do you think i think in this way i understand that man because uh at least like when my first book came out my first book was released in 2017 yeah uh the the process of writing the book was very different from the process i adopted to uh write my upcoming so uh at least until then uh i was not out exploring i was not uh, meeting new people Right. But now when I started meeting new people, I started absorbing more stories within me. Yeah. And that was, uh, I wanted to create something from that, but not creating, not getting down to work. It was irritating me. It was making me restless because right. all of this was bottled up inside of me. Yeah. And I started putting them down and uh, up until I reached a point where I started Still, I knew I was writing, but I was yeah. everything that I was writing. Yeah. I reached the point where I realized that, okay, 24th draft, that is the uh, draft which turned into my next book. Right. The 20th drafts, they were all deleted and they were stocked up inside my recycle bin. <laughs> so 
now I went ahead and checked out my recycle bin. There was about 300,000 words of unused material. Yeah. By 300,000 words, I mean approximately, uh, shit. It's a lot of words. It's a fat book. It's like, it's about <laughs> easily anything above a thousand page book. That's a big I, book, I have yeah. that much of material with me. And yeah. I could just either forget about it or things from that and create something yeah. new. Right, yeah. And polish it and putting it out just for my uh, viewers, listeners yeah. or readers. I'm just putting yeah. it out there because that's me having fun. Yeah. And that, and simultaneously, I'm still working on my novel. Yeah, so yeah. my fresh novel. So. Right, right, right. So win-win. Yeah, debut, your debut, al- uh, debut um, book. <laughs> I'm always into music, so I'm like, oh, that's... yeah, your debut bu- book uh, came uh, uh, in 2017. Uh, it's called the, I forgot what it's called. Uh, yeah, Sierra. So you mentioned, uh, you uh, talk about a character, uh, about his life and how sub- uh, how substance abuse uh, uh, came into picture uh, with his uh, perspective of life. Uh, I have to still read the book. Uh, I I, it's, I just read the description. I think it's... Uh, it's something um, interesting uh, to read about. Uh, essentially, uh, there's not like stuff uh, in India talked about a lot. Like there are a lot of stuff which is not talked about a lot in our civilization. I guess this is something which uh, is worth talking about. Uh, so, do you want to discuss uh, some uh, some of the things to, you did? I would love to because it yeah. is. Uh, I have dealt with. Uh, I think uh, I. Started consuming uh, alcohol in extreme uh, at the age of, uh, I think, from 18 and beyond. Okay. Once mm-hmm. I was just turning 18, that's when I started consuming alcohol in extremity. And through the years, it just became worse. It just right. kept escalating, getting uh, to a point where I hit f- eventually rock bottom in 2017. Right. And it was not a very good uh, trans transition where a healthy transition because keeping the alcoholism uh, aside there was a lot that was contributing to my psyche where i was becoming delusional i was living in a very altered version of a reality where people who were trying to make me understand my actions i was being responsive in a manner that those people are incompetent bastards. I do not really want to pay juice to what anybody of these people, anybody has to say because they do not understand what I am going through. Right. They have been uh, associating their issues with mine. They right. think that they are dealing with some real shit whereas my issues are absolutely irrelevant yeah. because I have been choosing this aftermath of my yes. Uh, or whatever life I'm living. It is just yes. the aftermath and I have right. no rights to complain. Yes. But one, two people's issues cannot be compared. Right. All that can be compared is about a person, how he, the drive to make it better from that given stance that these guys are in. Yes, yes. So at, at least with my first novel, what I tried to do was, uh, I knew substance abuse had played a very uh, significant role while I was consuming alcohol. By substances, I mean, I was into a lot of hashish. I was snorting quite a bit amount of cocaine. Right. Substance, yeah. And For this one, I think substance could be like a lot of things. The the hierarchy of substance is like very big, where, where on the bottom... Uh, there will be stuff like gaming. I would put gaming as a substance because basically it triggers. It's a basically an addictive thing. It can destroy your life. I've seen people who destroy their life just because of gaming also. So yeah, I guess for that matter, uh, substance could be anything, right? Anything that gives you a dop- uh, your dopamine release. An adrenaline rush, yeah, yeah. which uh, gets, and most people get addicted to the adrenaline. Yes. That is what I believe. Right. And I got addicted to that rush. Yeah. Where it got me to a point where I uh, just couldn't see myself otherwise. Yeah, yeah. And uh, now I was off cocaine. Like I quit uh, narcotics at the age of 20. All right. And beyond that, uh, two 
what I substituted that with was uh, alcohol right. and constantly uh, drinking for uh, I recently got sober but in March mm-hmm. I have been sober okay. since so, uh, before the so, lockdown yes yeah okay. so up until then uh, at first the alcoholism was associated to a reason then it just became a habit that I did not see myself without the party right. still went on yeah up until now mm-hmm. after my rock bottoms I uh, still partied on and 2020 I went to decide to go sober. Mm-hmm. So I've plunged into this thing and I have a grand understanding of it. Yeah. I know the worst sides of it and uh, in comparison to most, I still had it easier. Yes. There are people who have, uh, I mean, I was reading this uh, book of uh, Hunter S. Thompson called Hell's Angels. And it is based on the biker gang. So okay. in Hell's in Angels, America. Hunter S. Thompson, Southern, yes, uh, the Southern. biker gang in the United right. States. Right, right. Yes. So Hunter S. Thompson talks about the edge. The only people who know about the edge is the one, are the ones who've gone beyond. The rest of the people, they're just talking about it. Right. So what I'm trying to say is that I am glad I didn't. I'm truly grateful and I feel blessed that I did not reach that point where it was all over. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I'd gone to the doctor in 2017 during one of my binges, one of the most nasty ones. And I had partied for 96 to 120 hours straight. (laughs) You're an animal in that way. (laughs) No sleep. Party animal. (laughs) No sleep. And uh, I had consumed any form of alcohol that was available to me and what was worse was about those 34 shots of tequila that I had during the span of four days. I was not sleeping, man. And to fight, because what I was scared of was when I was getting down to sleep, I was having nightmares, which were not uh, something which I wanted to confront. So I rather chose to stay awake. Uh And not having a nutritious meal, just eating munchies and down right. to about one and a half bottles at least of whiskey or rum a day. So, that so was you were taken for the, all that was going on. So you're taken to the hospital for what? Like, a, I, I had a seizure. Seizure. I had a okay, seizure. Okay. And I went to the, right. and I was I was away from my family that time, and I was um, uh, taken to a friend's pri- a friend's family doctor's private clinic. Okay. And that uh, the doctor said that if you would have consumed a certain amount more, you would have died yeah. of alcohol poisoning. Yeah, yeah. So you you don't have a seizure problem, a ge- generally a seizure problem, right? It was the first time you had an episode. This was the first time I had an episode. Wow. I, it, so it actually, so I don't know, like seizure, can a seizure, uh, like uh, alcohol be a reason for seizure? I... I suppose I, what I understood at that time, the talk, I uh, got in bed, okay? okay. And this, I was at a backpacker's hostel at that time. And I was in bed just trying to f- fall asleep and suddenly my body started shivering. Yeah. That was the last I knew. My and body started shivering and my uh, the other hostel mate who I was partying with before, he had met one friend of mine. Right. During these binges, and because it was my yeah. birthday at that time, yeah, yeah, and he called him up. My friend came to get to get me. I have, I was unconscious, and he took me to the doctor, the family doctor's house. This was at about two o'clock at night, and yeah. somehow what happened? I got consciousness after a good forty-eight hours, and you were like blank. You didn't know anything in between. Nothing. You just. And Luckily, my friend covered up with the family and my friend was like, uh, we have gone to Goa for this one short story shoot and short film shoot. And uh, I'm really glad that the friend actually covered up me at that. And because if my family would have come to know about that, yeah. it was because I left my family's house in right. the starting of the year of 2017. Okay. And for 11 months, I was away from my family. And mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a time where I got on a 300 day binge. Uh, it was not good. So, yeah. I mean, what I'm trying to say is like when a certain person has 
had these mem- uh, these experiences right you cannot expect me to write about a mainstream Ex- exactly yeah thing. i am right. going to be writing about my alcoholism i am right. going to be writing about my drug addiction it actually doesn't even make sense for you to write anything else because that is what you've experienced right i try to do that in yeah. fact you can, you even can if act- i try to yeah. do that yeah even if you try to even do that even if i try to do that i will come down to this point uh, yeah. there was this one story that i wrote down in which i am having a absolutely uh, fine narration mm. up it goes down i've written the conclusion it is the final scene is yeah. a final paragraph in which me without understanding i write uh, that this person opens a drawer removes a spoon and an injection and places the glass of the crystal meth on that spoon and is using the lighter without me just uh, noticing i just ended up writing that without me even intending to add the crystal meth scene into that in the start yeah. in the final paragraph i felt like writing it yeah. because it just made sense it just yeah made it just sense resonated at that point yeah the actions of this particular character just yeah. makes sense yeah <laughs> the intention was not to write about drugs yeah so, i understand i understand completely I mean, because yeah uh, even if, yeah yeah you were saying you continue please sorry no yeah uh, since you said that uh, this this part you can you can say this like it's a it's kind of a creative blockage when you are forcing someone to not go with their instincts with their ideas that slowly sets a seed for like uncreativity because then you that's what is happening in china man like you keep forcing their people to do a certain things you said the rules and uh, anything which doesn't comply with your rules is something which is different is like is like what it's about uh, it's all a creative blockage yeah. uh, i'd rather use the i think uh, what is that word i mean it is always about restricting yourself to attempt yeah. certain subjects yeah yeah uh i don't attempt subjects which are you know based on sh- social causes because i don't see myself as the authority to talk about those things right what i can talk about is these things right and yes i can attempt on something on a social cause because that will be challenging for me i need to do my research accordingly mm-hmm. to get to that but again it is upon the society that i'm staying at right actually no you so are kind of doing reason. you kind of doing you are actually you know bringing awareness to society when you're talking about these substances because it's not it's a common thing in, in a species okay we talk about it as if it's like oh you don't know what you're talking about but everybody but in the future if you see the numbers like the the, the most number of money involved in any 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 business is drugs man like if that's the number stated then who are these people these people are around you they are they are hiding because you make it like something wrong right this is my philosophy okay i think the substance itself is not bad okay it's the, the it's, it's the interaction of humans with that substance is what and the state in which that substance is yeah the state in which that human is if the human is already covered with sadness or, or some kind of like discomfort in their life is if they already have a reason to hate things then substance is something that takes them away f- temporarily from that kind of you know depression or whatever what it could be anything you know because our lives are are there's we have evolutionary baggage we have different kinds of evolutionary baggage that's that's why we react in a different way around in social that's why we have this feelings like jealousy and this and that and right because these are our evolutionary baggage because we wanted to coordinate together when we were evolving that's why we did that stuff it's great that we have people who have been to the extreme and they're telling you that this is how it is man because then you don't have to do that kind of stuff right it again goes in a manner where uh, i don't advocate drugs yeah, and right. yeah alcohol. it is yeah. not me neither am i going to tell somebody not to do it do it yeah i'm not the person to tell a, a person don't do this i cannot tell them but yeah what i can do at least uh, in my upcoming novel i talk very openly about this right where um i i'm very open about these experiences of yeah. mine yeah, yeah because uh 
i can bring out a situation where if you go on this road this is where you're going to lead to right. yeah if this is where you are going to be and it is a still a choice that you are going to make at yeah. because i have understood this thing through my upbringing like my family uh, uh, i'm from an orthodox muslim family yeah so and my uh, everybody would uh, you know put these restrictions on me yeah. so that i wouldn't go out and do any of those right right yeah substances yeah and yeah what that made me was more defined because uh, as a 18 19 year old you do not really uh, have the understanding you just want your image and desire to be met Right. and then my immediate want was to go out and get fucking drunk right so yeah. i would just find a way around and go and <laughs> yeah. knock myself out and then yeah. come back later dealing with the aftermath you know taking advantage of my family's love for me because i know they're not going to disown me yeah and i know that they were uh, going to you know it the thing is going to go on for about a week and then they're going to be back to me that was right. a thing that i exploited without an understanding that doing just that was making me a degenerate human being right it got me to a point where that it was uh, where when i left the house it was uh, it had reached a point where i had no other option right where uh, i had got the things down to this point where my family was not uh, happy coping up with my lifestyle right so i yes. had to make that choice yes and uh i chose it i rather than getting sober i still chose the booze i still yeah. chose getting drunk rather than yeah. working on my issues right so yes. that caused a big friction and eventually by uh what i will think is now we are in a good space and mm-hmm. they're glad that i'm off this thing and i wouldn't want to yes. you know uh or bage keep right. just Actually, let's yeah. If we if we like kind of break down like how the society behaves to certain substances, right? So you you can say that they your parents or like in that matter your people who love you, you they want you to be safe. That's why they keep asking you or like insisting you to get off these substances, right? When they find out uh, about all of this. Now I th- I think the problem is between the communication, like the way of communication. the 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 cringing of uh, or or you can say like the the negative uh, portrayal of you know uh, having this subs- like having interactions with the substitute if if you know if if people who have okay so using a substance is not bad okay you can use any substance in the world you want you can you want you can use it it's when you are abusing it and and it's when it's destroying your life with in an this in irreversible pattern right that's when you want people to show more love to you instead of you know um, being like coming on to you like you know you, you are a useless person you are this and you are that and like if you, if people around you react to you like that way i think it, it is even harder for the people person who is who is in the state of you know abusing a substance to for him to get out because people are just uh, seeming to just hate him more where love is more important over there to show the right way right do you agree with this there are uh, various notes to this like mm-hmm. um, i have no i have friends whose parents are aware of them smoking pot right and uh, uh, they would r- rather have that uh, their child sit at home or and do it on the street right yeah and they had uh, this time not uh, drifting away but still focusing on what is more important and that is his whatever s- lifestyle is which is more important this is a source of recreation right. okay yeah uh, at first uh, knowing what i was doing my uh, family they were like okay you want to do this do it with your own money firstly yeah you don't need to go ahead and waste your dad's money his mm-hmm. hard earned money you want to do it earn your own cash and go ahead and do it man who's stopping right. you right don't uh, consume till and uh, limit that you're creating a mockery out of yourself yeah right and then uh, there were more notes and 
when uh, then came a point where they were like why do you have to do it either way and right. when all of these things were coming out across it was coming from their love right they were trying to uh, because substance abuse or a, even smoking a cigarette as a matter of fact mm. it is still going to cause it is still harming my body in some manner or another yeah and they wouldn't want me to voluntarily go and uh, harm myself just like that yeah and i've been smoking since almost uh, 13 years now okay yeah. and uh, i had reached a point where i was smoking two packets of cigarettes a day now i have come down to about three or four cigarettes that's right. it i do not feel like going overboard right cuz i know uh, that i have started running now so it has screwed with my stamina yeah definitely so i need to build the stamina again because i need to sit down and pull in work uh, sit down to work for 14 to 16 hours i need to be mentally in that okay. space where i can yeah. constantly create right so there was a time when they were warning me against all these things but i was not taking uh, into account what they were trying to say right my i cannot mug up things yeah i don't i don't i can't remember things verbatim that is what uh, the years of alcohol abuse has done for me right. and now it's up to me how i work around it yes right i became delu- uh, my delusion uh, people have started telling me that i have become delusion uh, uh, delusional with my ways in whatever yeah. things that i'm talking about right i was thinking in a manner that shit why is everybody judging me why is everybody pounding on me but what they all were witnessing was a slowly mounting suicide right where even i did not know that i was killing myself through my alcohol consumption right yeah and i was not i was scared to talk about it because i was scared of being judged that that look uh, see for instance now you i am talking to you yes. i do not have the look uh, in front of me of a person who is like judging me shit how the hell can this guy do this yeah yeah who, what kind of a person is this yeah. sitting in front of me Right. it is that i was scared to confront that look on people's faces yeah up until this time i it was in uh, the last week of april first week of may i was at a backpackers hostel and i uh, in 2017 and i that's when i met this ex merchant marine from um, the united states of marines are from the united states <laughs> so i right. met this dude and so he's a military guy three of like he's yes. a trained military guy yeah ex military marine so yeah. now uh, this dude has a history of narcotics and alcohol abuse okay and in 2017 i sat down and i had a talk uh, talk with this dude okay right for the first time in my through my years of alcohol consumption for the first time i wasn't feeling judged and when i was talking to another person about my consumption habits Yeah. I I wasn't feeling judged in a manner that this guy was not telling me uh it's just the same thing that I try to do with my books. Yeah. This guy was not telling me not to drink. Right. This guy was not telling I mean I was already off drugs. Yeah. This guy was not telling he, I would go drinking. He right. would join me. He would sit down with a fresh lime soda and I have a bottle of rum with me. Right. Always. Yeah. He would sit through the hours I am sitting and drinking. Right. but he wouldn't have that said he would constantly tell me that if this is the life you choose this is how it's going to be hmm. and okay. that those conversations with him impacted me on such a ground that i want to bring it out in my novel that these things happen and right. if you are on that dealing part. with it yeah not everybody is going to have the receptors to uh, grasp what you're going through not right. it goes the same way for mental health yeah. the same i not, i can not talk about mental health because i have not been diagnosed uh, with uh, i have not gone and seek professional help to give any terminologies of it but what i can talk about is yes i am an alcoholic and i'm a recovering one at it yeah. i know what is what happens there i right. talk to you about alcohol is i will talk to you for hours about it right. mental health yeah i do not know what it is but yeah. if you're talking to me about 
anxiety, depression, I will definitely sit there and listen to you. Yeah. But I will you're putting me in a spot where I will uh, want to think twice before saying anything to you that is going to trigger you because that is the yeah. awareness that I have had right. through these yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it is ha- about having the right people, the people who have the receptors to grasp these things. And right. initially, my family did not really, uh, they even though they tried to understand me, it came down to the same thing where I thought that they would never understand me. So I was very uh, scared of opening it up, opening yeah. up to them. But now I'm at yeah. a point where I do not need to lie about any of these things right. anymore. Right. Because I have gained that acceptance that yeah, it's done. Yeah. So they are more open to grasping what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. I would like to bring like a statics, uh, some statistics to your, uh, to this table. Uh, uh, there was like a research done in recent, uh, I guess, I don't remember which country it was. Can you just uh, check in which country heroin is legal? Is it in... Wow. Uh, it's in, uh, I don't know, it's, I can't remember. It's, uh, it's either Switzerland, I think so, I don't know. It's one of these UK uh, countries. So they actually believe that any substance, like, okay, let's not start from there. Let's talk about, um, uh, the, I have a friend. Um, uh, he is from uh, Mexico. Uh, like, he's not from Mexico. He's been there a couple of times up and there. So he talks about the cartels who are, who are like, in, in charge over there, who are doing the... Uh, tra- drug trafficking and like most of the stuff like over there and uh, a lot of it is responsible for the drugs which are coming in and they're not uh, in, they're not into traditional drugs now they're into those uh, amphibians and uh, uh, those um, yeah. painkillers and those antidepressants yeah. and all that stuff because they are legal in America right because d- doctors can prescribe these but they're highly addictive and a lot of people like ha- having like a very bad time like ha- getting out of it because it's legal so your doctor is just coming so it must be okay so they are having it on daily basis but they're not able to get off because the depression is okay so uh, so the uh, argument is that if if there's a way to solve a problem of an individual without having to give him uh, that particular drug but actually give him help to solve the problems in his life right if a person doesn't have a job for instance then he can he, and can uh, like the society who are trying to catch them uh, users who are substitutes and put them in jails instead of using that money which is going to jails they can use it to ha- have organization to help these people to have like therapy and all that stuff because i think that is what essentially not not, not just me like there's a, a, a philosophy out there who is, which is followed by a lot of uh, intellectuals and they all and the example of this is uh, which country did you say they haven't legalized, but they have There's a clinic. Yeah. In yeah. So in Switzerland, right? In Switzerland, they have clinics. So if you are a heroin addict, you have to go to this clinic. You can get your daily daily dosage, and you have like a, a threshold for it. You can you can't go. They, you, they will give you any amount, but the, not an, the, not the amount which will uh, kill wow. you, right? Yeah. So you can go take that and go to work. After that, you can do whatever you want. You can go home chill if you want. And this is daily stuff. You can have it daily. So the statistics show. Like uh, as soon as this, ha- they had a heroin problem in their country. So there, it was very bad. Like the crime rate had gone up. The prostitution had gone up. Like the murders have gone up. Okay. And after this release, everything went down and they traced like what was the, what was the relationship between heroin and the uh, black market and the uh, 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 crime uh, and uh, all these factors, right? So they find out that since uh, heroin was most of the reason why a drug cartel are drug, gangs are even there because because when the police are not in charge of a substance then the criminal gangs if it's illegal then the criminal criminal gangs get the hang, hang of it right they are the ones who are dealing it because it's illegal now it's black right and that when that goes down mm-hmm. and on top of that prostitution is there because there are females who are addicted to uh, heroin for that they needed to like have money right for them so that they just to uh, sell their bodies for that now they don't have to do that anymore because they're getting it for free. Prostitution fell like drastically, man. Like there were there was literally no signs of prostitution after legalizing heroin in Switzerland. Isn't that amazing to see to like to see that if legalizing something like solves such problems, then what uh, are we doing with our society? Putting people in jail. It has, it has been happening uh, since a very long time. Not only even in the United States to get uh, so. It's very simple. 
if that you do not have a control over a certain drug yeah legalize it and uh put the distribution in a manner which is controlled yeah you have yeah. legalize it and have controlled distribution control distribution right uh, I I was reading a book which is based on uh, it was by William S Burroughs. He is from the Beats generation. Mm -hmm. So uh, so what the, uh, he wrote about in the book Junkie was that uh, so this dude was he heavily addicted to morphine. Right. And um, uh, the stuff what they he gave in uh, was right to numb you. I I don't really know how morphine works, but I right. know this dude was addicted to morphine. Okay. So what um, he writes in the book is that he uh, there were these camps. I think they, these were Chinese camps in the United right. States. Right. Uh, by camps, they mean there were hos uh, hospitals for like clinics. Whatever, these clin rehab, mo the modern age real rehabilitation centers. Right. So these were called Chinese camps at that time. Yeah. Over there, if I'm correct. But uh, so now what these guys would do? They would go to, uh, once they run out of money, they would go to those camps. And they would have, I think, five milligrams of morphine consumption a day. Right. And so, for a period of six months or so, till the time they do not have a source of income outside, they are at those camps, yeah. getting uh, treated for right. their addiction. And the mm -hmm. moment they have a job outside, they just go out and uh, down to work and getting more money for the original morphine intake that they, these guys have been into. Yeah. So this was happening. I'm not talking about the same legalization yeah. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, but yeah. the structure has been happening yeah. since many years where right. people have, where the governments have tried to have this, the consumption of drugs under control. Right. Now, uh, it, way, it, the way our society functions is rolling on popular belief. Yeah, what is trending? For instance, Yes, uh, I wouldn't use the word trending, popular belief. I mean, uh, in a society, if there are about 100 people, what are those 95 people, uh, what is the 95% of those people talking about and what are those 5% of the people talking about? Right. 5% of the people will be game for legalization, absolutely on point of the benefits of marijuana, cannabis, or benefits of hashish. Giving into the uh, ideal, uh, given to the ideology of their own lord, uh, have been have been consuming cannabis in whichever form. Yeah. Getting into those ideology statistics and medicinal researches, yeah. which they are right in their own way. That five percent of the society is right in their own way, but the dominating ninety five percent is not going to let that five percent grow. Yeah. Right. So that is the kind of a society that we are living in. Yeah. Understand. And either you become a person who rages against the society or you become a person who mellows down and does whatever the fuck you want to in a very uh, discreet manner. Yeah. And once uh, that uh, person is caught doing the thing in discreet, you know, discreetly, that person is crucified in front of the entire society. Yeah. He's, uh, that he's given that shame, shame, right? Yeah. Exactly. And what is more, uh, we cannot change others' opinion because that A, involves a lot of time, B, which you can completely use on bringing the awareness for your own self or creating a space for where you can find like-minded individuals. Yeah. You, do not, you cannot change another person's opinion. You can only change yourself. Right. B, you can just ignore whatever the hell is going on Right. And go go ahead doing what what you want to do, yeah. and just making sure that you do not get sucked into that abyss. Yeah. So it is up to us as individuals how we use our awareness and for what benefit. If we are going to be using it for the benefit for of ourselves or go outside and try to benefit the society as a whole. Yeah. What I say very often, and I. I I'm getting a feeling I say this at least once a day that we <laughs> artists are not going to change the world. What we are going to do is make this world a place worth living. Yeah, right. That is all we guys can do through our art. Yeah. And uh, that is what I do with regard to my stories as well that I know so much. I, I have experienced a lot of nasty shit because 
as a young adult that is all i put myself across to right and it is from that i try to bring awareness about subjects of legalization of cannabis or legalization of any other things because it has been a part of my life but now it uh, it is something which if it is legalized it it will have its pros but the people will not want to look at the pros they will want to look at the cons yeah obviously because it is more convenient yeah yeah, yeah. and the and the and the idea of a drug itself right the chemical the drug itself the idea if if you just say the word drug also as we saw in arnab's video right <laughs> he just goes <laughs> shouting crazy drugs drugs <laughs> yeah if you if no, you at least finally they're talking about drugs on mainstream but they are just doing bullshit <laughs> what are they talking about what the fuck in fact they made cannabis ka like they made the uh, like the what do we say whatever work these guys were doing like it came even down now the cannabis like they are putting suicide uh, and cannabis together and all that stuff too i mean it's not looking good for cannabis <laughs> yeah sometimes society when cannabis uh, is zero this is what really uh, i mean i do not get cringed by this these things i do not get uh, i was re- repulsed by whatever is happening yeah but uh, what i find is humor right yeah I'm it so is dead <laughs> i'm so humored about the capability of the human brain yeah dude is it getting recorded it is getting recorded yeah uh, so uh, yeah you were saying that yeah the capability of the human brain right it is uh, if like the, there's this uh, argument which people uh, put forth right uh, we look at our closest ancestors they are like chimps or baboons you can say right the difference between their dna and our dna is by 1% just 1% i mean our dna has 1% more information than they have now with just that one person we are able to build spaceships and we are going on the moon and we are planning to go on the mars and the best thing chimps can do is like stack boxes maybe in shapes or like i don't know grab is a banana the, what um, now the now I've seen a video that, of uh, yeah yeah you were saying the, the bigger difference that actually happens is that um, chimps and our ancestors right ancestors is that, is that, Prim- primates well, primates primates are a fair primates, yeah. there uh, they were more into survival yeah obviously nature makes you like that right they were they were into survival and we are uh, more in on the grounds of ex- excelling where we from where we are yeah yeah we no longer need to survive as much we used to need yes. to do like back we need more comforts we yeah. need uh, we we need comforts Yeah. So uh, well, it's it's all right, you know. There are there is a certain group of people who are moving backwards. Yeah. So it's fine for them. Yeah, so, people are somewhat tribal. I'm not talking about tribal. I mean that is also being very kind by saying yeah. by moving backwards. I'm talking about you know their brains. They are going yeah. down. I understand. Yeah. And even even about. the primates. Yeah. Primates are building blocks and they're yeah. having fun. but these yeah. guys are wondering why is the block being built like this they just want to throw yeah. on the blocks and the primate is wondering i thought i was the one who was fucked up right. so that is <laughs> yeah that is how we generally go in definitely and see that's the kind of humor that i find in all of these things because yeah. i am nobody to comment on what any of them are doing it suits them it makes them happy but at the end of the day it boils down to one thing yeah. that um, peaceful sleep at night if they can sleep peacefully at night right. knowing whatever they are doing good for them yeah as far as i'm concerned i cannot fall asleep peacefully knowing the fact that i have fucked with somebody else's state of mind right yeah and scarred another human being but i, but I don't emotionally but i don't think like I, everyone feels that way like <laughs> some things some people are just as <laughs> they love I, it they, I, I guess they get a better sleep after hurting someone's feelings. <laughs> Some people. And it is. It is really funny that yeah. uh, I guess uh, what I work towards is that you know having a sign of sense of relief oh. when I'm when I'm in the bed at about two thirty three o'clock at night. Right. I wrap up everything. I go to sleep at two thirty three o'clock and wake up at ten o'clock, ten ten thirty. Right. So when I'm at bed in bed at two thirty three o'clock, I do not want to think about anything. 
I mm. get in bed too. Within two to five minutes, I've fallen asleep because I'm not worried about the shit that I have done throughout the day. The people yeah. that I have hurt, the people yeah. who uh, I've disappointed because I am doing things which are better for me, and I'm enjoying doing these things. And yeah. if a a person also enjoys committing murder, but the murder also catches up eventually. Yeah, and I'm glad that I do not have to live up, to live my days wondering when the fuck is it going to catch up. Yeah, so right, seriously, and that, it is that a sim- yeah, and that state of mind will be so heavy, right? Like you are always constantly worried that like you have done an act which is making you worry, so like you can't go to sleep. Then you said something like uh, I I don't have uh, I had a habit of lying a lot to my parents and uh, yeah. my immediate family. I live in a joint family out here. Yeah. I had a, even in a situation where I do not need to lie, lie, I would just mm. lie out of habit. Right. Because I I still haven't understood why. I mean, there were times when I was doing something really grave and lying then was about my survival. You know, me just getting out of that situation. But now. Then came a point where I was just lying, lying out of habit, where I didn't need to. Right. Now I uh, do. I am living in a manner where I do not need to be sneaky, where I do not need to lie about anything. Right. And it keeps me uh, at peace with myself. Right. I don't. Right. Even if I'm going out, the lockdown has eased a little yeah. out here. So right. yeah. even though I'm going out in the locality to meet my friends. Yeah, you're in Mumbai right now. I'm in Mumbai right now. Yeah. Yes. Where are you? Where in Mumbai? Uh, Juhu. Uh, Juhu. Okay. Juhu will follow uh, Juhu scheme. Right, right, right. So now, uh, even when I meet my friends, my friends they uh, are they have they still party. They have a good right. time. Yeah, yeah. And but they have not had this situation. They did not get into it as hard as I did. Their thing yeah. has been recreational. So it has been that way throughout. I was the one who was constantly yeah, going right, way yeah. overboard. Yeah. So now, even when they consume in front of me, right. I do not feel like partaking. Right. Part of the reason is because I'm enjoying this state of mind. Yeah. Secondly, uh, I when I go back home and if somebody asks me, "Mathu, did you drink or did you smoke smoke with your smoke pot with your friends?" Uh, back in the day, I would have an urge to lie to them and try to put in more efforts in chewing gum, putting eye cool, and things like that. Trying yeah, yeah. to be absolutely fine in front of them. Right. Oh, drama nickels out there. I do not have right. to focus on that drama. Yeah. So, with just me quitting, yeah, or quitting alcohol, I don't need to lie about my life in whichever manner that I have to. Right. 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 That is that is uh, interesting to know. Yeah, that is something uh, will be like always. Everyone who is doing some kind of substance, they have that uh, small <laughs> like fear in the back of their head. Like, if something can go wrong in time, especially in Kerala, man. Like, if in Kerala, I have this friend. Okay, he he is like a casual uh, smoker. He smokes weed, but he smokes cigarettes a lot. So he was just after the lockdown. Apparently, after three or four months, he got out. So he went, met with friends, and went to have a smoke or something. And they didn't even have the smoke, and the cops cat caught him. And it was horrible, man. Like they made him stay. They checked their car and everything. So there was, there's no privacy on the road, basically. Like they'll fucking, I mean, the shame. I mean, just yeah. I I think you know. Do you know about the state of like the state of people in my in the in Kerala, like how they are, like mind. reacts to substance especially weed man i have seen some parents like they go insane as if some like some devil shit like <laughs> seriously it is I, funny yeah there was this uh, time when i i think uh, when i'm in bombay i smoke these i have these rollies yeah drum please oh yeah, yeah. american spirit american spirit but, uh, i i use so I'm standing on the street outside um, this one place called Rasta, right. and this was just at about one one o'clock, and we just got down with karaoke, and now um, I'm standing outside and I'm just rolling this thing. Cop yeah. comes to me. Yeah. I mean, the cops they generally come around at this time. Right. The cop comes up to me. What is this? Whatever. He just takes this thing from my hand, and I'm 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 
least bothered. I'm standing there. I'm just rolling in front of him. He thinks he thinks that I'm rolling marijuana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. he takes it and he's smelling it, and he uh, takes his pack. He's smelling it. I'm just standing there with the skin uh, with the yeah. thing, just like that. I'm like. It was one of those moments I felt so happy. Yeah, because like, he, God, you yeah. know, yeah. <laughs> because you know, yeah. Because you know, he's so stupid. Like, yeah, I know. Like, yeah. I it's, wish I get like get in that situation, man. Like, <laughs> not stupid. I mean, like, ah, got you, man. You right. think you're too smart? This yeah. one's Matu one U zero. <laughs> yeah, seriously, dude. Oof. I mean, yeah, that is kind of like if you, but if you did have something on you, but that would have been some different complexion, right? <laughs> okay, so this, I was actually come, traveling to Pune once. There was yeah. this friend of mine. He told me, "Matu, uh, why don't you get me a half a tea?" Yeah. And I'm like, uh, "Yeah, sure, I'll get it," because I was I just coming going to Pune that weekend. Yeah. And I was sitting in the car. Uh, I was just going to catch a bus to Pune. I think uh, it was. Say at about six o'clock, I was plan- five four thirty six o'clock. I was plan- uh four thirty five. I was actually planning on catching the bus, so I thought I'll just meet my friend, and uh, I picked up the stash in the morning. Then we guys were sitting, and we guys were like uh, drinking in the car. Hmm. Now uh, the cops came, and we guys were like, okay, you know what? I just figure this out. Yeah. Okay, and uh, we. S- he hit the bottle of uh, whiskey under the thing right absolutely all right we chuck the uh, we put the glass in the dashboard and stuff i mean darup ka hota to it would be all right because we were standing right outside his house and we were not right. going to be driving right but the cops came and he start he checked up on us okay shit i had i had been off uh, drugs for a very long time okay right. and even the half a tea which i had was not for me I was kept in my uh, the denim. Uh, you have the big pocket, and then you have the small pocket, right? Right, right. Yeah. So it was kept in that small pocket. I did not know. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, yeah, these jacket pockets fine. I'm fucking drunk, and yeah. I did not know. Shit. Now this dude, he put Gets he it. finds that. Oh fuck. I'm like, wow. Shit. <laughs> you know, you know, you have one of these moments. A friend keeps telling me this. Matu, these kind of things can only happen with you. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> It was so funny that I stepped out of the car and the cop was standing right there. I'm like, yeah, sure, do check me. Check me, yeah. Then, as if like, okay, he is going to, uh, it's going to be really bad for him. I'm like, do just check me, man. And then he checks me and he's like, what is this? I'm like, oops. <laughs> so funny. Okay. And well, I mean, uh, I had to can- cancel my. Trip to Pune, nonetheless, to Puna, yeah. and whatever hard cash that I was going to be using for that entire thing, yeah. I had to give it for these dudes. That is all. That is and, what it comes down to, right? Yeah, and so so goes with the uh, so goes the stash. I'm <laughs> like, oh, and one and a half hours dealing with the entire situation, absolute yeah. buzzkill. I sit down and my friend sits down and I'm like, "Adi bottle to rakhi hai na." He's like, "Ha, bana be." Oh shit, yeah, <laughs> dude, yeah, that is very. Uh, It's very scary. Uh, like when you, but I've come in a state where like I just don't prefer like smoking up or anything outside. Just our own personal space. That's best. You just don't want to get in that half an hour situation you told right. So tense, and then you have to fucking plead and like act like a fucking like a like you were you were like some slave or something. Like please, but forgive me as if you had done some huge mistake. I have and so many cops smoke. <laughs> so many cops. You can smoke. use your. Yeah. Energy in doing something else. You yeah. can use think about something else than worrying about these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Uh, I feel good being sober, but a part of the reason why I choose this lifestyle is because uh, I get to put in the hours. You know, right. like um, I wake up in the morning, I read for about half an hour, forty-five minutes, then I sit down to write for about two and a half hours. Then I, what I was shower, brain a mass, yeah. lunch. After uh, lunch, I either sit down to write again or I learn a chord on the guitar. Okay. Then after that, I go for a run for an hour, come back, work for another two hours, eat dinner, play, uh, learn the guitar or listen to a podcast or watch a movie or write yeah. again. You have a lot that of time. And that's it. And three o'clock, I get into bed, and 
why while listening to a podcast within 2 minutes i am asleep sleep yeah peaceful so uh and if i would be drinking no i would be writing only for 2 and a half hours right the rest of it was just me drinking and doing all the fucking uh yeah. <laughs> Usually stuff. Were you like in such a point where you were like trying to uh, uh, somehow justify drinking by by like by saying that you uh, know it helps me write or something? Because that's what a lot of artists do with like a cannabis. Like they like yeah, cannabis just puts like, me in the mood to play, right? I was I, in fact thinking about this yesterday only uh, about this podcast thing and thinking about uh, this specific thing, okay. whether if. Uh, a uh, booze uh, helps me create art right okay so now uh, i dropped out of, i dropped out of my final year of college okay right and uh, what we, what were you studying i was doing a bachelor's in management studies all right bms you're, you are in a so commerce, dropped, commerce sector no wait wait yes commerce yeah yeah right okay commerce so uh, i was doing my uh, bms and i dropped out in the final year of college and uh, uh because bombay was becoming a little too much for me to deal with because right. i had just got out of a relationship and a lot right. my consumption had gone up to a grand scale I went to rehab in pune and uh, which was uh, of i mean that was a very different experience i could I'd talk about it if you want to but uh, i went to rehab and then i came back and i left bombay went to chennai and whatever it was a long thing mm-hmm. and uh, living in chennai for a year i uh i'd gone sober for about i mean not sober i mean i was occasionally drinking but i got heavily into fitness then i start uh, then i dislocated my shoulder and i started scribbling uh, in my journal right. and from that that it was making me feel good so i got into writing after that and this was i think i was when i was 22 and now it came, comes down to this point where uh my alcohol consumption was so grand where uh i was lying to my parents about me going for uh, me uh take me wanting money to produce a short film or me wanting money to do this thing with regard to my art right is constantly lying to them by giving my art a bad name but what i wanted to do was drink right and i thought that to create art i needed to be depressed yeah and uh whereas what i was doing was i was giving this one uh, emotional tangle of mine a bad name i was upset at like what i told you there's a big difference between upset about this ordinary thing about a certain thing going on and being absolutely depressed right so that is where the problem began where i started making myself believe that i was depressed so i acted in that manner right and i was constantly wearing that attitude when it came down to my writing right and uh where, where in fact i was just re- responding to a situation which was not good for me yeah constantly drinking and when i was constantly drinking uh, i was writing as well so i used to think that ki i wouldn't uh, be able to write without getting drunk and that was my biggest mistake yeah i wrote my first book absolutely blown out of my head i was so fucking drunk when i wrote the first book and uh, even those 23 drafts that i wrote i wrote those when i was absolutely drunk but the 24th draft that i wrote at which became my novel my upcoming novel i wrote that when i went off alcohol for 3 months absolutely sober and <laughs> i could see the difference between the art i created uh, my between the second book that i wrote and my first book which i wrote absolutely right and yeah what i will choose is this book over this book any yeah. day yeah because i was uh, feeling everything when i wrote yeah. <laughs> let me let I mean, me yeah let me just follow up with another question here uh, so uh, you saying uh, yeah so the switch after the switch this final draft was the was the one you know new like this should be your first uh, novel right so was it fair to say that that uh, 
your uh, journey through having this substance abuse kind of put you in this mindset to now finally reach this point or uh, do you uh, do you give credit to uh, this journey you had or do you think like if you had a different I kind of i would not do it any any way else i wouldn't i am um see if i had uh, i cannot go back and change anything all yeah, it is obviously. i find acceptance yes boss this has happened right. and i can be either a person who becomes better from this or be a person who is just going to be knee deep buried in this shit that fuck i have done this thing yeah. how do i recover from this you cannot be so a guy you, like, if you have already like been through so much shit you need to make it productive and uh, more importantly is that uh, i have been extracting things from my life uh, uh, my uh, what i have experienced yes practically speaking duniya mein kisi ke paas kisi ko ghanda fark padta hai ki maine kya ukhaade le right kisi yeah. ko fark nahi padta yeah par uh, for me that story matters yeah what i put myself through and what i came out of that matters to me and i'm going to be sharing it with people i because i can share it with people this yeah. is yeah. something which is in my control yeah i can't ask people to read my story yeah. but what i yeah. can do is print that fucking book put it out, put it out. Yeah. for the audience to read yeah give them that option you have this option too yes. you get it i'll be grateful you don't get it you're missing out on a story which is important for a person like me right yeah so uh, i would not have had this journey any other way because uh, without it i wouldn't have a grander understanding of uh, how much support i have received from my family right over the years yeah how i wouldn't have had the understanding of what i need in a relationship right. i wouldn't have met people who were uh, hell bent of on criticizing me and humiliating me and now the same people coming and trying to be uh, good with me just right. because i'm not drinking right yeah i wouldn't have seen that transition of human behavior yeah which i seemingly laugh upon <laughs> yeah i wouldn't have gone to a point where i met the most degenerate version of me right. to become a version which a person could completely recline upon yeah so that experience is as important as what comes out of it yeah it, it's interesting you said like uh, it's important uh, that you interact with the humans in a way where you understand how the nature of human works not everyone is aware of right like uh, not everyone is aware that we are this conscious cre- conscious creatures on this because they have another idea of life right a lot of them think like we are sent by some entity and then we are somehow responsible but but this but even if you put 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 like you if you throw away all that bullshit right you still are exposed to this idea that you are in this planet which i'm i'm actually a very science oriented guy so i love science because that is i i believe that is the only uh, domain or department which is giving you answers and like answers which is objective the word object is important because we both can share the uh, outcome of an experiment and we and we know that we both see this particular thing right that's something you cannot get with some other kind of theory right it's science which can give you this objective truth we can say so i i i think so like this exposure right okay we are not sent by an entity we are not okay so we are here on this planet what what are we why are we here so these questions are like the unanswered questions do you, do you worry about they are do you think about all this uh, all these questions um, there are uh, there are a few uh, things that i've been practicing since um, uh, a couple of months i mean i have had an idea of uh, my being right and that was just a person who is absolutely fucked up right and, and that is a person who is going to be putting uh, uh, which every relationship that he touches he's going to turn toxic that was the idea that i had right yeah uh, up until the point i decided to become sober 
when I became sober, that's when I started being more calmer and more aware about my surroundings. Yeah. And if I was to add some meta physical thing in all of this, what I can say is that uh, I have been, I'm doing exactly what I was uh, want to do. Right. If I was to get into like time deep thinking of this, yeah, because uh, I need to believe that. Right. If I'm not going to believe that I'm doing exactly what I was put here to do, I was not going to be putting in my best effort. Yeah. Yeah. And I've come to go farther down this road of pursuing the written art that I I'll be a fool to start from scratch all over again into doing something else. Also. Yeah. So that is a thought which is a make believe that is going to keep me going again and again and fighting through all the bullshit that is thrown at me. Right, right. Then another belief, it, it just goes down with this point where uh, I, I, there's another belief that goes down with this point where I wonder that, uh, you know, whatever's happening is happening for my own benefit. Right. And I believe that uh, somebody or the other is participating in my life just to contribute for my betterment. Right. So if I'm looking at any other person's behavior in that manner, I'm going to be thinking of it in a way that, uh, you know, if this person is trying to criticize me, it is on them. It is not on me. Yes. I'm doing exactly with the right intentions that I have in mind. I'm doing right. things for my own benefit. So right. if a person is trying to be a douchebag, it is on them. It is not on me. Yeah. And, that is how I'm going to be keep on progressing in life. That is really what Im- is more impactful and is a sign of getting along with the rest of the species that is all around you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at- lastly, it is about acknowledging the fact right. that uh, this is what is happening with you in this moment. If you are feeling sad, go accept your sadness for that moment. Do not block it for a further... Uh, period like okay I will deal with this later no sit back yeah. acknowledge the fact that you are not doing all right right now yeah. because if you're not going to acknowledge that fact eventually it's going to keep on bottling up and you're going to yeah. explode Yeah. and when that explosion when you explode it comes down to a meltdown which I had in March which made me want to get sober right yeah so I guess uh, <coughs> that so the, was the, the entire grand of focus of yeah, yeah. Why I'm doing what I'm doing, right, and just yeah. to put it in a very simpler manner, I'm yeah. just enjoying what I'm doing and having a good time. Yeah, just yeah. to put it very simply. Yeah, yeah. That, that is the goal, you uh, know, uh, like the ultimate goal. Right, you need to enjoy what you do, like irrespective of however you are living your life. If you are happy in your life, doing what you're doing, that is what matters, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, 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 I think we had a very long conversation already and I'm, I want to get into a lot of uh, different things as well. Uh, but however, I think so we'll have to do another episode uh, because we have reached, uh, we've already exceeded our limit. I think this one is going to be a longer one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But this, yeah, it has, it was very, uh, yeah, it was a very good flow, right? Yeah. I really, I enjoy doing these things when I get to contribute to other people in whichever yeah. manner where I get to say out loud what is actually right. there, what actually takes to yeah. work as in to pursue the written art. And yeah, yeah. yeah. And as I you think pointed, that is very yeah, yeah. yeah, as you pointed, like it's, is, right. it, it was yes. important to, it's important to put your uh, stuff out irrespective, irrespective of thinking, like what is going to be the perspective of the person who's seeing it. So it's important to put it out rather than thinking about how people are going to react to it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Anyways, it was great to have you, man. And we wish to have you on again. And uh, yeah. I'm really glad what you guys are doing because I am really looking forward to more Indian podcasts. Yeah, yeah. And finally, everybody's getting into the audio structure of it and I'm really glad that you guys had yeah. found it yeah. in you to contribute to this scene yeah. with 
Yeah. Interactions with artists. Yeah, we just want like a place where you, you an artist can come and discuss a long discussion rather of uh, you know uh, of the things they have been through because stories is what adds to your information because people's perspective is very important, right? Because you're actually getting someone yeah. else's perspective, which is impossible for you to get because you are stuck in you, right? You cannot get someone exactly. else's perspective. In that way, and if, everybody's listening. Yeah. Right. Everybody's listening. Yeah. And my book is available on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I, I, we we need to shout out this book. Uh, yeah, we yeah, uh, yeah, and and to Daisha as well for the cover art. Yeah, for connecting. And and Daisha, and thanks for her to connecting uh, uh, us to you, Lee, because that's how yeah. we came to know about you. It's all right. Any any time you want it. Yeah, yeah. We we will do another episode, dude, for sure. Most definitely, man. Sure. Yeah. Yes. Anyway, thank uh, you for having me. Yeah. All the best, right. guys. Yeah. Same to you, bro. Thanks. Mm-hmm.